Uh, next thing you know, you know, the little kid in us takes over and, and we get into trouble. We get into places that we didn't know we were going to be. And next thing you know, you know, you are in trouble and you might spend a day or two or three days out there. And uh, that brings to mind one thing that I am going to talk about, and that would be this right here. That's called Sharp and Spark. And you know, it's funny, the guy that invented it called it Spark and Sharp. Well, I took a liking to that name, and next thing you know, I'm calling it Spark and Sharp. Its real name is Sharp and Spark, okay? It's a real good combination. Now, you're not going to carry that in your pocket, and you probably won't even carry it with you. But boy, if you could have something like that that I've been chopping on these trees with and stuff, that would be a real blessing. So anyway, if you take your Sharp and Spark, which has on the uh, top, or whatever you want to call it, I guess it's top, you have a V-notch, and that's a tungsten carbide. I call it a no bottom, you know, no way out, so to speak. You stick your knife in there, it's captured. You got very sharp corners just like it has right here. All right, so when you stick your knife in there and you draw it through there, which would look just about like this right here, you take your knife and you put it in there. You'd never hold it in your hand like this, but just to look at it, it'd look like this. And, and then you draw, and, and you can probably see it chattering, and I'm just, that's stuck. So you got to be really careful about how you bring a knife through that V-notch. All right, the other side, which is actually what I call the open face. So if you have something flat, you grind it 90 degrees, you have two corners, one on the top and one on the bottom. And that's what I call the open face. You have the handle, okay, it's about four and a half, five inches long. And then in the handle, you have a part that unscrews. That's the black cap. You have your key ring. And that black cap is where the magnesium is stored. You have the end right there. Screws in there like that, right in the handle. It goes everywhere you go. What a fantastic survival tool. I sharpen 43 different types of blades with that right there. Your fire starter here. You can carve magnesium off of it, and then light the magnesium. Or you can cheat just a little bit. Pick up a little tiny bottle of hand sanitizer. Why? It's 40% alcohol. That 40% alcohol lights like gasoline. So you take your kindling, get a little kindling up there, a little bit of dry stuff, take your hand sanitizer, squirt it down in there, give it about five seconds to soak in a little bit, and then all you need to do is just give it one good flick, like that. Another one. See the sparks? You get just one of those little tiny sparks in that hand sanitizer, you got a fire. So cheat just a little bit. Now here's something else you can do to cheat a little bit. Take a tuna fish can, okay? Take a can opener with you. When you get out in the boonies, you eat the tuna fish. Take some crackers, but don't throw the can away. Why? That's going to be, become my stove. What I do is I take that little tiny tuna fish can, and I take some kindling and I put it in there. I put a little hand sanitizer. I put one spark in it. Now I have a very small contained fire. And you know, you can cook, uh, cook, you can cook food, you cook a rabbit over it, you know, a leg at a time or something. You can boil coffee, boil water. You can clean out your tuna fish can, drink water out of a stream. You can carry all kinds of things in it like that. But one of the most important things that you can do is even in your tent, you just take some sticks, you know, just take some things like this right here, a little bit more of it, put it on the tent floor, and all you got to do is put that little tuna fish can on the tent floor, on your sticks, build a little tiny fire, and inside my tent, I can have a fire, and I won't freeze my fingers, I can make some coffee, I can do a lot of stuff like that, just because I have that little tuna fish can. So, you know, you can use bean can, poke some holes around the bottom, bend the top, put your fire in there, it'll suck air through the bottom holes, but it won't put it out because the air can get out through where you bent the top of the can. You know, and that's pretty ingenious. So there's a lot of stuff that you can take with you that'll help you survive if you prepare just a little bit before you leave your vehicle, house, whatever you're going to do.